Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com and we're going to talk about some Photoshop today. Now, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. And also, if you really enjoy the video, consider supporting the channel by picking up one of my Photoshop courses. You can either use that little eye icon up there in the corner of the video or use the link down in the bio. This entire channel is funded by viewers just like you, so thank you. Let's jump in and check out the tutorial. So over here, this is the finished effect. This is what we're going to be creating today in about five minutes or less. So how do we do this? Well, first and foremost, go ahead and click File New. Choose to create a new file. And you can really go with a huge file or a much smaller file. It's just going to make the rendering time vary. I'm going to go with a 2560 by 1440 sized file. And I'm going to come down here and choose Create. Now, I have a white background, which is the default here. Well, which is what I set as the background when I created the new document. But it is the default as well. We need to grab our Type tool. Cool. And uh, we can just click anywhere, and I'm going to type out the word amaze, and I'm going to come up here and hit the little check icon to, con uh, to commit the change here. Now, I'm going to go Window, Character to open up my Character Panel. And here in the Character Panel, I want to choose the font. Uh, I'm going to go with Jazz Script here. Uh, really, any kind of like bold scripty font, they work really well, but kind of any font is going to work pretty well for this. Uh, now, I'm going to drag this kind of to the middle of my document. Uh, 500 points is great. I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger because my document's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go like 750. I'm going to make it pretty big here and just drop it right about in the middle of the file. And I want to go ahead and make the color of my text very, very light gray. So I'll open up Character Panel once more. we got our color option here. So I'll just click on that. And I'm going to go with the color F7, F7, F7. It's an extremely light gray, almost white. You can barely tell uh, that the text is even there. But here's where things get important. We want to right click on this layer and choose this new 3D extrusion from selected layer option. And Photoshop's going to say, hey, I'm entering into 3D workspace. Yep, great. Go ahead and do that. Um, and we're going to kind of ignore this for a second. Uh, it has flipped us to the 3D workspace, which, you know, has all kinds of different panels open. But we still have our layers panel here. I'm going to select that. We want to select the background layer here and right click on this and choose to make this a 3D postcard. So the postcard option right there. Go ahead, hit OK. Boom, we have a postcard card layer here. I'm going to select both of these layers, hold down the shift key and just click on the text 3D layer here. And then we're going to come up here and choose 3D merge 3D layers. So we're going to kind of combine these into one layer and you can see it makes it look like the text disappears. But it hasn't. If we come over here to the 3D panel, I can see that I have this background mesh, which is actually my 3D, that postcard layer. If I shut that off, you can see we just have this white 3D amaze text, which is still difficult to make out because it doesn't really have much in the way of shading or highlighting. It's just all solid white. Uh, but if I turn that background mesh on because it's also white, it's almost impossible to see anything. And then here, amaze the text, you can see we have that. So we got our two 3D layers in here, and then our environment scene and current view, the, the camera. Uh, but we don't need to really mess with them too much here. What we're going to do is we're going to select the background mesh. We're going to hold down shift and select the text layer. And what I want to do is kind of see like where they are with relation to one another. So down here, I've got this whole viewing widget. I'm going to click and hold on this, this little globe spinny thing here. This is, you can as you can tell here, orbit the 3D camera. So if I click and drag that, it's going to allow me to drag and I can see that that sort of that white wall, that's that poster layer. If I shut that off, you can see we just have our text floating in, in 3D space. Again, it's very difficult to make out exactly what the text looks like because it's all solid white, nothing really in, in the way of shading. That's because we just have it as a color white. We're keeping things super simple. What I want to do is get rid of some of the extrusion here on the text. So the extrusion is kind of the thickness of it from the front of the text over here to the back of the text over here. I want it to be much, uh, I don't want it to be quite as, you know, wide, if you will. So I'm going to select the Amaze Text 3D layer right down here. And you can see here I've got this Extrusion Depth option, which currently is 622 pixels. Well, I'm going to reduce that to about 150. And you can see how, how much sort of shorter or skinnier our text got. Now, what I also want to do is select both of these 3D layers. So select the background mesh, hold down Shift, select the Amaze layer. And uh, with the Move tool selected, this guy right up here in the toolbar, we have these alignment options up here. I just want to choose this one right here, align the left edges. So I'm going to select that and you can see it like presses the text against that 3D postcard as if it's a wall or a floor or whatever. Now in order to restore kind of the normal viewing mode, well, just come over here to this little widget, right click and choose to restore the default view. And you'll see here that it's going to spin us around and bring us back to where we were. And you kind of can see the outline of the text here because we have that text layer uh, selected. 
Now, all we need to do to begin really seeing what we've got here um, is render this out. Now, before we actually render it, you want to come to your Photoshop preferences. Uh, on the Windows machine, this will be edits, and your preferences will be down here somewhere. Photoshop preferences and come down to 3D. And here under 3D, I tend to like to set my shadow quality to very high. And then your ray tracer, you can set the high quality threshold anything above about 4, uh, depending on the speed of your machine and how much VRAM you've got, this uh, video RAM here, uh, depending on how much of that you have. It's going to just take longer or not quite as long to render this out. Four is going to be a reasonably quick render, uh, but it's not going to be nearly as high quality. So I'm going to go with something like seven, which is probably going to take about 15 minutes to render this out. Uh, but of course, we'll speed through it here. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to select this little icon right here. This is the render icon. By the way, you could also come 3D and choose to render the 3D layer like that. But I'm going to just hit the render button here. And you're going to see Photoshop is immediately going to work. It's going to start processing through this. And you can see how it's automatically building the shadows for this 3D object as we would expect it to be if this was a real, you know, 3D or not even really a real actual tangible object in, you know, real life. It would have kind of these shadows uh, around it and, and all through it. So we're going to let Photoshop do its thing. And uh, as soon as it finishes here, well, I'll be done talking. So we'll move right along. In fact, I'll be back a lot sooner than expected because here you can see the time remaining expected uh, is 33 minutes, 43 seconds at this very high quality, but it has processed two passes. And you can see how we're getting this, this nice 3D text. Now, it's got a lot of grain, and that's because it still has to finish all the rendering and processing out. But when it does, you get kind of a nice, well, let me just hit the escape key to, to kind of cancel out the render. But you do still see we have, this, uh, we have this nice bit of 3D text, and it saves the rendering as it's done so far. So that's cool. But when it renders out, you'll get a nice smooth text effect, uh, kind of like this here on the screen. So, guys, for this tutorial, that's really going to be it. That's going to wrap this one up. 3D in five minutes, well, I guess in hindsight, more like 3D in 10 minutes. Uh, but 3D in five minutes sounds a little bit better in the title, and I've already mentioned it at the beginning of this video. So that's what we're rolling uh, with, and you can roast me in the comments. I always get roasted about time-related stuff anyway. So it's cool. I'm used to it, and I'm... I'm really kind of bad with time anyway, so it's it's probably justifiable. <laughs> but for uh, creating 3D text, some very simple 3D text here in Photoshop with ease and quickly and letting Photoshop do the work and the rendering for you. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.